Hi everyone, I hope you had a really good Christmas and New Year. I'm back with some more videos and in this video we're going to look at Unity's high definition render pipeline and its lighting. Let's jump right in. So here we are back in our good old friend Unity uh, and we've got the HDRP window open or the HDRP version of Unity up and running uh, and we're just in the default sample scene for a minute. Um, now the HDRP is aimed at uh, your higher end devices so like your high end PCs um, high-end VR and games consoles and as such the way the lighting works is slightly different to how it will be in the default version of Unity and the Universal Render Pipeline. There's a couple more settings um, that you can play around with that are going to enhance your lighting in the HDRP. So the HDRP uses a hybrid of the deferred and forward rendering paths um, and in conjunction with the tile and cluster renderers it just allows the lighting to scale better. Now there's a lot of technical stuff in that, um, I wouldn't worry too much about it at this stage, just know that the HDRP is going to make your games look awesome. So let's have a look and see what's different about the lighting. So it, staying in our sample scene, we're going to first have a look at our direct light. Let's have a look at some of the settings on there. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a couple of extra settings on our directional light. Now with the HDRP it's important to note that it uses something called PLU, which is physical light units. Um, and the theory behind this is that the, the lighting is supposed to work in the same way it does in the real world. So for things like intensities on this emission tab of our directional light, you see it has the lux value here. And lux is short for lumens per square meter and is a unit of luminance. And because we're working with physically accurate lighting, it's important to respect Unity's um, unit convention, where one unit in the world is equal to one meter in real life. Now there are other different values for this, like you can click on this um, when we look at the lighting later and you'll see there's other different kind of um, properties or values that we can use, which will be, um, from memory I think it's Candela, uh, EV, and Lumens as well. And they all work slightly differently. Uh, and to be honest, the best way to learn about these is actually to look at the documentation, um, which I'll put a link in the description and you can take a look at that. It's actually very useful. But the most important thing to note with the HDRP is that it uses physical light units um, to light the scene to make it look really, really nice um, and accurate as well. How accurate? I'm not too sure. Um, remember, this is it's only really a simulation, so it's probably quite accurate and close whether you could use it in a in a scientific sense is another question so with that very high level overview of how lighting is functioning in the hdrp let's jump into a blank scene and play around with some of the settings on the lights so here we are in our blank scene uh, and by default i have a main camera a directional light and a sky and fog volume and these will all work in conjunction with one another on how your game looks so lighting is really kind of a balancing act between a couple of things. So whether you have all the settings on the light, but then you can always tweak those settings through post-process uh, and the visual environment on your in your volumes. Let's just go ahead and look at the directional light for a second and have a look at some of these properties. So first up, we've got our general tab, um, and this is we've gone over in a, in a previous tutorial. But this one effectively gives you the, the choice to select what type of light you're using. Next up, we've got our angular diameter. Um, now changing this value on a directional light is going to have an impact on the specular highlights and the diffuse lighting fall off and also the fall off of the baked shadows and the ray trace shadows. Next moving down to celestial body. Now this is going to work in conjunction with the physically based sky. Now at the moment I believe by default we're actually using a HDRI sky so changing these probably won't have too much of an effect at the moment um, but to see this is the celestial body is all about the kind of disc that you see in the sky, so we could change this over to a physically based sky. And you can see by changing that everything's gone black, that's because I'm below the floor, so if I bring it up we should see our sky and there we go. And then now we can use the celestial body properties of our sun to actually change how the disc will appear in the sky. So we can change stuff like the flare size and the flare fall off and tint, surface texture and distance and so on. Emission we briefly touched on in the intro, but here we can control things such as the directional light's color temperature, whether we want it to be like a warm light or a cooler light. 
um, and then the intensity values here, which for the directional light are measured in lux. Now, our scene is kind of dark at the moment, and um, there are, because we're using real world properties for our lights, physical light units, um, there are settings that we can get um, for this value that are more accurate. And for a list of those, we can use um, Unity's documentation. They actually provide a list, which I'll put a link in the description for. And you'll see here on the lighting that has the physical light units and it gives you an overview of all those um, light units you can use. But then what's quite useful, it gives you some light intensities, um, which are measured in lux. Um, so if we wanted a very bright sunlight, for example, we could use uh, a lux value of 120,000. For bright sunlight, it's 110,000. And for blue sky at midday, it's 20,000. So you can see here that our light intensity is a little low. So if you wanted blue sky at midday, well then documentation here recommends a value of 20,000. So we could put that in there. Change that to a 2. Uh, and another thing you'll notice here is that depending on how we're looking in our scene, um, we're kind of getting different lighting results. It's still kind of dark. Um, and that's something we you need kind of need to balance with an exposure. So on your volume that you have in your scene, let's shut down some of these a second. You could add um, the fix. You could add in the exposure. And under mode, I normally use fixed. And then um, use a exposure value of something like 8.5. Let's try that. And you can see here, it starts to give you slightly more um, accurate results for a sky that you would expect to see at midday. And that's probably a little bright. And you can change this value until you find something that you're happy with and um, that looks realistic to you. You can see what I mean by that, even though it is using physical light units, it's hard, it could be quite hard to get that accurate kind of sky and lighting situation. What works better for me is just kind of thinking um, about what I'm going for and then trying to eyeball some of these values and, and make sure it looks right in my eye. See, for a sky at midday, um, this, the default seems kind of dark using the lux settings that are recommended. Um, so by using the exposure and um, having the mode at fixed, and then playing with the fixed exposure value, I think um, you can just brighten up slightly and get a, a more pleasing result that to, to me looks a little bit more accurate. And it's also not going to change um, depending on like, how we're looking. It's all, always going to be a fixed exposure. So that's how I kind of set my directional lights up. Uh, and then like the documentation recommends, let's have a look, 120,000 for a very bright sunlight. Let's see what that actually looks like. That's if, I guess if you were looking right into the sun. But yeah, that seems um, too bright. So I'll bring that down to 20,000, which is a sky at midday, apparently. The sun will be up, be up there. But that's kind of how our celestial body works. It works in conjunction with the physically based sky. Uh, and then the emission value controls how, the color temperature uh, and the intensity of the sun or the, the particular light that you're using. Volumetrics, we'll look at this in another tutorial. But um, if you didn't have volumetrics on your light, then your game that's a, might look a bit flat. It kind of replicates like dust or fog in your environment. So it's going to break up uh, if you have something, a light passing across something, you'll see like the rays from that light being obstructed. Um, and it, it does look really nice uh, and it's a really nice effect. I normally leave this on by default, but again, it's, it's an artistic choice. And lastly, we have our shadows. And this is going to contain the light's shadow properties, whether we have shadows, shadows, shadows enabled or not for that particular um, light. And then we have an update mode, which is currently set to every frame. And your choices are on enable or on demand. Uh, and then the shadow resolution as well, whether you can want low, medium, high or ultra. Um, then these values are very much going to depend on your target. And then whether you want the contact shadows, so um, when something's like touching another object, you can enable or disable these, and these will very much have an impact on your performance. But have a play around with them and see how you get on. So that's the directional light. Let's have a look at some of the other lights that we have and their options. Let's go ahead and have a look at some other lighting. 
turn my direction light off for a second so we can see the effects of what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and create a new light. Just make a spotlight for a minute and then we'll just center it. There we go. And you can see it shares a lot of other properties from our directional light. And a lot of these values and properties will be shared across the lights and some will have a few extras. Um, so we've got our general, our shape and our emission, um, which we can go ahead and play around with these values. Let's say we wanted to make something like I don't know, a lamp. Well, I think the recommendation is between 200 and 300 lumens. I'm going to leave it on Lux for a second. Um, and that's one of the big changes here is that we now can choose our, our lighting unit that we want. And as I said, a description of those is available on the site. Let's have a read through those. Then we have the at value for our um, Lux here. And what we're saying is a value of one meter, uh, an object will receive the entered amount of lux. So if this cube was one meter away from our light source, then it's going to be receiving 250 lux per square meter. Um, so just play around with the values until you can get something that looks right. So let's say I wanted to make a, like, a table lamp here, for instance, and it's sitting on this table, it's probably going to affect the floor a little more bit more um, so we could say that two meters we want any object to have 250 lux you can see we're getting some it's going to brighten this up a little bit actually so you can see so uh, 5.4 meters we're getting 250 lux on surfaces and then we also have things like the range and the indirect multiplier as before as well as the volume metrics and the shadows and you can see here with the shadow map we could enable this yeah, so we get shadows on our lights and it starts to make everything look a whole lot more realistic. Then we can go ahead and change this light type. We can go and change it to a spotlight. Rotate it around. And again, all the same similar settings. Um, let's say we wanted to make a street lamp. Um, we can either look at our intensities here. Uh, so again, we, it's, it's maintained all our emission properties. It's still using the same as our point light was. But because it's a street light, we may want to change this. Because of the spotlight, we can control things like the angle for the outer angle and the inner angle as well. So we get a nice kind of fall off to our light. We've got all those settings that we can control. Um, and again, we've got all the all the properties to control distance and lux value as well. So then the last light I want to take a look at is actually the area light. Now this works a little bit differently in the HDRP in that uh, you can have it running at real time, whereas before it had to be baked. So you could have an area light. Let's just center this. I'm going to crank up the intensity a little bit so we can see it. Turn that one off. So this area light before had to be baked. But now, as you can see, as you're moving around in our scene, um, it's all kind of real time. Some of the properties we've got on our area light are the shape, where we've got the size X and size Y. And we also have emission, again, as the Lumen Nits or EV100. And again, we have our shadows for this light if we wanted them. Nice, that's, that's dramatic. I really love area lights. I really like the results you can get from them. That was a really high level overview of some of the lighting in HDRP. And the lighting in HDRP really works in conjunction with not only the lights, but also the environment as well. And they, they, they kind of go hand in hand, but that's probably a tutorial for another day as this will end up being about an hour long. But this one really just covers the basic lighting and the different light types and some of the different settings that you don't see in the URP and the 3D version. And hopefully you'll be able to see, looking back at my other tutorials, the differences between them and hopefully understand what's going on. So remember, if you like graphics and you're into game development, then this is a place for you and I really appreciate your subscription. Uh, and if you like the video, uh, then that'll really help me out as well. This year, I'm looking forward to doing lots of Unity and game development tutorials. Uh, it's gonna be really exciting 2021 uh, and it'd be great to have you along. I'll see you in the next video.